Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyperX video breakdown. In today's video, we are going to be confirming that we are on the precipice of experiencing a massive bull cycle in the digital asset space, and it is all unfolding right before our very eyes. We're going to be discussing and talking about the total cryptocurrency market cap. We're going to go over some XRP and XLR technical analysis, so you're not going to want to miss a beat on that update. And then we're going to just be diving into the crypto landscape and doing a general overview of where we currently sit and risk on sentiment right now. So if you enjoy these video breakdowns, giving you guys fundamental and technical analysis updates, do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. We do appreciate the love and the support. So let's just jump in first to set the tone for today's video breakdown. Two video clips I want to share with you guys because we have been talking about these things for multiple months slash years in the CyberX private community. And that is first, that central bank positioning, i.e. monetary policy is one of the key drivers of risk assets like crypto. Take a second and listen. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, and the first point actually that I would like to make on this is that expanding global liquidity has been probably the strongest driver. In fact, I would say clearly the strongest driver of bull markets in recent times. And I don't just mean the crypto market, I mean financial markets in general, and especially since 2008, the financial crisis. Basically, asset prices are increasingly shaped by what previously would have been termed unconventional central bank policies that, that basically directly affect liquidity conditions. And these have actually increasingly become the dominant force in, in moving asset prices. The and then the second thing confirmed by a highly reputable individual that is at the DTCC has stated before, and we're going to confirm in today's video breakdown, that retail traders right now have an upper hand on institutional investors because we don't have a lot of regulatory restrictions hindering us from adopting these digital assets and getting involved in this crypto ecosystem like institutions do. We are at the forefront and way ahead of institutions. Take a second and listen. So as one famous Bostonian once said, the institutions are coming, the institutions are coming, right? And we're starting to see progress uh, where more certainty in the market is helping institutional um, adoption, such as the approvals of Fit21, other instruments, uh, both ETH and Bitcoin, uh, spot ETFs, those have been super helpful in uh, in pushing the uh, movement forward. It just shows you there's pinned up demand. It is it is pushing through. There's a couple of things that are a little bit different about this. This is the first time in our history where we've seen actually retail lead and institutional follow, but uh, the certainty that we're getting right now from the regulatory and the legal framework is helpful and will continue both ETH and Bitcoin, uh, spot ETFs, those have been super helpful in uh, in pushing the uh, movement forward. It just shows you there's pinned up demand. It is, it is pushing through. There's a couple of things that are a little bit different about this. This is the first time in our history where we've seen actually retail lead and institutional follow, but uh, this- Now that's gonna play a massive role later on in today's video breakdown as we read the fundamental digest from our private community because we are going to annotate that institutions are, they're starting to flood into this space, all right? And we can see that clear as day and we're gonna go over that in today's video breakdown. So now that those videos have set the tone, all right? I also wanna confirm to you guys in a document, yet again, why you all should be paying attention to this type of information because here we can see, let's just go ahead and share screen. We can see a report. This is an update on Rahul Advani's um, LinkedIn profile. And you can see right down here, he says other noteworthy updates that took place in October this year via the regulatory and fundamental uh, environment on a global scale. Well, the Bank of International Settlements published a paper exploring relationships between the stablecoin market, money market funds, and traditional finance market variables reaction to crypto shocks. All right. Now, in this report here, you can see this is the updated BIS report, BIS working paper, stable coins, money market funds, and monetary policy. This is from October 2024. Just to show you guys that one of the largest organizations for finance in the world is talking about the same thing that we're discussing and talking about here at CyperX. You can see right down here on page five, it says dollar monetary policy, therefore acts as a key nexus between traditional and crypto markets right? And then down here in the conclusion, let's just scroll right down here to that piece. It says, U.S. monetary policy not only affects traditional financial markets, but also exerts significant influence on cryptocurrency markets, especially stablecoins. Now, 
If you have been following us here at CyperX, we've been talking about monetary policy, interest rates, and the shift in the global environment amongst central banks. So in our previous video breakdown, we touched on that a little bit, but now over the weekend, because the last update that I gave to you guys was about two days ago, we are still seeing a massive inflow into the digital asset landscape, where today the cryptocurrency market cap is up over around $15 billion and has revisited its highs from back on July 31st. 2024, when the Bank of Japan hiked interest rates, the yen, the yen carry trade unwound, and we saw a massive sell-off from about 2.4 to 2.3 trillion dollars all the way down to 1.7. So we're going to go over this fundamental digest. You can actually see some of our private community members are reading this right now as we record this. But these are the type of reports that we type out every single day to our private members in our Discord. So that way they are up to date on what's happening in the current market environment. We also host Zoom calls going over price analytics and price projections in not only crypto, but also in Forex and futures and commodities markets, right? So again, if you guys want access to this information before, you know, we release it to the general public days in advance, because, you know, this this report I typed out this morning for everybody and you guys probably won't watch this until tomorrow or the next day. OK, so if you guys want an upper hand on Delta Zones, institutional insights, fundamental breakdowns and technical analytics, then head over to CyperXTraining.com. We would love to have you on the team and further push your education. So let's talk about this. And then after this, we'll get into the XRP price analytics and the XLR price analytics, showing you guys accuracy across the board time and time again. We're going to continue to pump out accurate TA for you guys and you know, just nail these price targets as we are still in the early stages of this digital asset ecosystem before trillions of dollars flood in. What are intraday levels to be looking at for quick take profits, rolling that capital into stable coins that are earning yield, and then redeploying that capital back in after market pullbacks. So real quick, over the weekend, let's talk about the current market environment. Positive risk sentiment in the crypto market has persisted with the total cryptocurrency market cap reaching its highest level since July 31st. And I have a firm belief that if this optimism and risk assets in the environment that we're going to talk about right now continues to maintain a risk on market mood, we are going to see higher price levels as we head into 2025, give or take some slight retracements for some small market corrections, but it's nothing to be fearful over if any market corrections do happen. We know that the long-term outlook and trajectory of this digital asset landscape is to the upside. So let's continue this report. The market is currently up by around $15 billion for the day that was as of time of writing this report, trading at about $2.3 trillion. Investors continue to anticipate 25 basis point rate cuts from the Federal Reserve, which again, we talked about in previous video breakdowns. You have now also seen a fundamental report or um, a paper, a white paper from the Bank of International Settlements stating that monetary policy, U.S. monetary policy is a key enabler of traditional and financial markets, right? And the liquidity movement within inside these markets. Not only that, but we heard a representative from Cigna mention the same thing, which is why here at Cyprex, we stress the importance of not only learning this information, but actually implementing it into your trading and investing regime, which again, we touch on for you all in the private CyberX community, how to do that, how we are doing that, and how you can partake in that. Um, for example, uh, sorry, excuse me, let's see where we left off. Federal Reserve, while other major central banks are also moving towards easing monetary policy. For example, the ECB cut rates by another 25 basis points last week, and further cuts are expected from both the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England at their next meeting. Meanwhile, the Bank of Japan is not expected to implement any further rate hikes at their next meeting, which is also positive for risk assets. Central bank policies remain the key driver of liquidity flowing into risk assets such as cryptocurrency. The optimism has also been supported by the potential for ceasefire talks in the Middle East, which we talked about in previous video breakdowns as well, where over the weekend, no new escalations took place. The market has maintained its risk on momentum. Additionally, positive U.S. economic data has also alleviated recessionary fears and supported the narrative of a soft landing. A soft landing, if you guys don't know that terminology or that vocabulary, go back and watch some of our previous fundamental analytic breakdowns because we talk about that in detail. And that has all, all these factors, right, have boosted investor sentiment further. OK, so let's talk about the total cryptocurrency market cap. Let's digest this and let's get into a little bit of a fundamental report that I found very interesting supporting um, you know, the narrative that we as retail investors had the upper hand, but now institutional investments are really starting to pick up. So I apologize if you guys can't see this. Let me try and zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see this a little bit better. 
All right, there we go. So to continue this private report, we said here, in the past week, Bitcoin-related news has captured the attention as spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US saw their largest single-day inflows in over 120 days on October 14th. This is last week. More than half a billion dollars pouring into these funds. This influx pushed Bitcoin price to $67,800, its highest in over three months. Now, in our private Cyprex community, in previous reports and videos that we had covered on the Cyprex YouTube, we told you guys, and in our private community, we were buying Bitcoin at $58,000, looking at it as an opportunity to get in at a discounted price. Now, you can see that that has significantly paid off. So again, showing you guys that here at Cyprex, we are always ahead of the curve, not only in price analytics, but also in fundamentals and how we digest the markets. So $67,800 was achieved, its highest level in over three months. ETF store president Nate Garashi, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, highlighted this as a significant milestone, noting that spot Bitcoin ETFs have nearly reached $20 billion in net inflows over the last 10 months. He emphasized that these inflows are primary, uh, primarily from advisors and institutional investors rather than retail traders. So take that into consideration that now many altcoins across the board are still heavily discounted from their all-time highs. You have to see this again, not financial advice, but as an opportunity. When the rest of the market is fearful, that is when you need to be greedy. When the market's greedy, that's when you need to be fearful, right? So taking a little piece of this article, I just want to read this to you guys. Nearly half of 47% of traditional hedge funds now have exposure to digital assets. That is a massive milestone and has presented a market increase from 29% in 2023 and 37% in 2022. So you can see now, you know, we're seeing progress amongst institutional investors. Furthermore, 67% of those hedge funds plan to maintain their current exposure in digital assets, while 33% intend to increase their digital asset investments by the end of 2024, indicating growing institutional confidence and, contribu and contributing excuse me, to significant inflows in the Bitcoin ETFs. Institutional adoption driving demand for ETFs, while retail demand is undoubtedly a significant factor, the role of institutional investors in driving these record-breaking inflows cannot be overstated. The participation of financial advisors, pension funds, has been crucial for Bitcoin to achieve new price highs and potentially surpassing gold as a prominent asset class, showcasing its decoupling from traditional markets. Cal said that institutional adoption of Bitcoin ETS has risen significantly by 27% during the second quarter of 2024, with 262 new firms entering the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF market. Can you imagine as these numbers increase what the market is going to look like looking back in the next five years? Can you imagine being so fearful in the space right now because of the turmoil that we've experienced over the last three years, not being able to put that behind you and invest in the future of finance? And looking back in five years, you know, beating yourself up because you messed up, don't be that type of person. Understand that we are on the cusp, give or take some headwinds that could come about in the next couple of months, but soon that will all be behind us. And we will, in my personal opinion, continue this upward trajectory in the digital asset space and experience a three trillion plus market cap in the near future. So you guys kind of get the picture, right? We're seeing a massive inflow and uptick of traditional financial players adopting these digital assets and starting to take on a more riskier appetite. Now, all of the risk factors can not be ignored. We still have to maintain a diverse perspective where risk is not alleviated from these markets just yet. So some of the factors, like I mentioned in a previous video, that we are still paying attention to for a possible slight shift in market sentiment are these here. U.S. economic data, any strong data that contradicts expectations for future rate cuts that could prompt a shift to a more cautious stance, or any extremely downbeat data that raises fears of a recession on the U.S. front. The Japanese economic outlook, any stronger than expected inflationary readings that could revive concerns over a potential Bank of Japan hike, increasing yen demand and impacting risk assets. And then obviously, of course, the biggest factor in my personal opinion of them all are geopolitical tensions. Any escalations on the geopolitical forefront, especially in the Middle East, that could create a risk off market environment. So be paying attention to these things. Again, I'm not sitting here saying that prices are going to go up for forever. Then these are some of the factors that here at Cyprex we're paying attention to that could create a market pullback, which again, we will see as an opportunity. All right. So this upcoming week, the market's focus will still remain on central bank positioning and key economic data releases from the U.S., the UK and Japan. That is our primary focus here at Cyprex. And here is a fundamental digest going over what to be paying attention to this upcoming week. I'll zoom in for you guys. If you want to pause that real quick and you want to read it, 
feel free, be my guest. Here is that information. You guys can just pause the screen. We have a covering of the United States data to be paying attention to, the UK and Japan, all right? So real fast, before we start to cover the XRP technical analysis and the XLR technical analysis, I just want to show you guys that we've been accurately tracking this information for you all publicly on the YouTube, especially in previous video breakdowns, showing you guys time and time again how accurate these institutional deltas are that we provide in our private CyberX community to our Discord members. So here is a video from 11 days ago where we mentioned that as long as price can hold above 52 cents, the next intraday profit-taking areas of interest will be that 57 cent threshold. So let's just take a second and listen to this. Support a rate cut narrative from the Fed further. It is my firm belief that we are going to hold above this 52 cent psychological level to some degree, whether that means we see a slight drop below to grab liquidity, break back above, retest, and start to make our way back up towards 57 cents, or we continue higher from where we're currently trading at now. So in a risk on market environment, the remainder of this week, if risk sentiment continues to improve and we see a turnaround in digital assets, the first bullish targets that I will be looking for intraday on XRP is that we can break above 57 cents. And so now just doing a quick update on the digital asset XRP. As of time of recording this video, it is the 20th. That video was uploaded 11 days ago. That means that it was uploaded on the 9th. So you can see the XRP was trading at about 52 cents and we rallied all the way up into that 57 cent threshold, literally tapping it to the absolute T of a degree. As you can see with this nice bullish candlestick wick, before some slight profit taking unfolded. With that being said, looking at some forward looking price levels, our optimism still remains on the digital asset XRP that we are going to see higher prices come into fruition as long as this 52 cent threshold holds. So as long as price remains above 52 cents and the outlook for the digital asset space remains risk on, we are going to continue to be buyers above 50 to 52 cents and to see price come into 57 cents again as our first area of interest, considering that right now we're trading at about 54 cents. At any point in time, if 57 cents is broken, we're going to be looking at targets of about 62 cents for some intraday profit taking for some possible slight pullbacks in any break above 62 cents. Our next bullish targets are going to be 72 cents. Anything above 72 cents on XRP, I will be targeting 96 cents to a dollar 10 on an extremely optimistic perspective. Okay. So those are my upside targets. If the sentiment does shift or any black swan events unfold, my bearish targets still stand at anywhere between 49 cents, any break on 49 cents on an extreme risk off market sentiment and 44 cents will be my next DCA levels on XRP. So now you guys have both my bullish and bearish levels. And again, showing you guys accuracy across the board over 11 days ago, when price was trading at about 52 cents, we were calling for 57 cents on XRP. We tapped into that and we have slightly pulled back currently trading at about 54 cents now so let's see if those continued bullish targets can come into fruition as long as we are trading above the 52 cent threshold any optimism continues heading into xlr in this video breakdown that we uploaded publicly on the youtube we had projected 89 cents on the digital asset xlr take a second and listen Now to the upside, if we do break out, where will I be looking to possibly take some partials off the table from where we were entering back in the 1st of October at 55 to 57 cents is going to be some price targets of anywhere between, let's just say 86 to 89 cents as that high if that threshold is broken. Now, given the current market update, you can see that prices did break out of this consolidation range from time of recording that previous video breakdown, and we tapped into 89 cents to the T of a degree, showing you guys yet again on multiple digital assets across the board that these institutional delta zones prove accuracy time and time again. So just to give you another quick update on price targets that we are paying attention to, DCA levels, in case the market sentiment turns around and flips risk off and we see a significant market pullback, which right now is not the current environment, but just in case, my next DCA levels on XLR will first unfold at 72 cents. If 72 cents is broken, we're looking at about 64 to 58 cents for our next DCA levels or institutional buy delta zones. Now, anything above 89 cents, let's talk about these upside targets for some intraday profit taking. 
Our next bullish environment, if we can break 89 cents, is going to be 99 cents to a dollar. If 99 cents to a dollar is broken, we're going to be looking at the next bullish targets of about a dollar 13 to a dollar 10 for some intraday profit taking. So, time and time again, we have shown you guys accuracy across the board, not only with fundamental analytics, but also with technical analysis. If you guys want more access to the type of insights that we have here at Cyprex, again, the stuff that we cover on YouTube is just scratching the surface of what we cover in our private community, then head over to CypressTrading.com. We would love to have you on the team. None of the targets that I've given you guys is financial advice. These are levels that I'm personally looking out for, for either dollar cost average levels or intraday and immediate profit taking on these digital assets. As the current sentiment continues to unfold, hopefully we can see it maintain this risk on market environment. We can continue to see some upward trajectory and higher price levels in the total cryptocurrency market cap, possibly surpassing July highs at $2.4 trillion. Let's continue to remain data dependent and watch how this upcoming week and the remainder of October unfolds as we inch closer towards 2025. Many blessings to you guys. If you enjoyed this quick video and fundamental update, do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video breakdown. <music>